There it is. First pick Terrorblade. Go again. Yeah, first pick Terrorblade. Uh, we have it. the IO Axe again and the Nyx wow. Assassin. You were right, Peter. Uh, getting bound next to the Brood. And that is a first two Drow Ranger. I, I love the... The fast draft, like yeah, we know, we know. You know, you guys want to do your, your TB opener. <laughs> we had this prepped instantly. Lion, very annoying. Drow, very what's annoying. The, what's the best chair against Drow Ranger? A uh, Specter. They already have terror blade. It's not happening. Yes. Offlaner. But something Counter that oh, can get on top of of Drow. <laughs> I thought that was your point. <laughs> I, I was, I was just, I was just testing you. I, I personally think it's Timbersaw or Furion. Um, would be like my favorite picks there. They go with the Abaddon, right? Getting that Fada Comfort here out of the pool before it goes bye bye in the ban phase. Also, not a bad idea. The Mirana and the, the Tide Hunter still in the pool, and last time it was OG picking those up. When you have a Drow Ranger, obviously she's one of the more squishy um, car uh, carries. However, last time OG played Drow, I believe. Uh, well, not last time, the, the time before that. They had an alchemist with that as well, and they gave her a very fast Ags, making her actually very sturdy. Is that something you should be worrying about when you're, tun when you're Tundra? Which show? The, the Drow at Alk combo they did before. Um, I think Terrorblade on lane doesn't really, he really likes playing against Alchemist because he has mm -hmm. such high base armor that he doesn't really care about the acid spray as much as other heroes. It, it is something that they may go to because it is comfort. However, I think that there probably are uh, better heroes. I was going to say uh, No-Tail played that Naga Siren support um, in the game. He didn't I don't, He didn't lane with Drow, did he? But I think no. that that could be a good support for him. They could even do a Naga um, Drow lane. And I think that the Naga Siren can be very good against... Naga support can be good against Terrorblade because you could just sleep when he pops meta and disengage. Ooh. This is a very high-value Myers game, too. We have Drow versus TB. Yes. Like, uh, Mars is good for like either team. Why is Mars good for either team? Uh, you have your arena, and these both these two heroes like to sp like spend as much of the uh, the fight on the outskirts as possible, and the arena just breaks that ability because either you're locked inside and being focused, or you just like can't get in to actually engage in the fight. Terrorblade also has the uh, the what is it the terror is wave it the, the ags right yeah the terror wave. Terror yeah, the Terror Wave, which is a nice combo with uh, the Mars Arena. Also, yep. the, the the fact that you can't attack range attacks from inside to outside or outside to inside, that's what makes Mars so good against really just any range carries in the game. Yep. Well, and you even have Bulwark, too. <laughs> like, you, yeah, you that, don't even think yeah. about that that much, but obviously that has a, a huge impact on the fights, too. Yeah, it's a secondary thought, but it definitely does help out. OG is banning out those 33 heroes, so we'll see if Mars uh, joins that. Because so far, 33 hasn't played Mars yet this tournament, but then again, they haven't really played that many games compared to uh, some of the other teams, so I'm sure that 33 knows how to play Mars properly. And uh, on the other side, also offline heroes, well, mostly offline heroes, getting removed with the Darkseer and the, the Pango. Yes, we've seen Pango mid as well, so a little bit of a, of a tour, two-setter there. Uh, Invoker also out of the picture. Substance Invoker previous game, of course, doing work. Uh, w one critique to Netta's gameplay is I think he is not necessarily like the best ganker. So like you mentioned Mars, I don't think mm. Mars is his best hero. He is. Mm. He used to be a carry player and he still kind of plays like a carry player. If you see it in his play style, he's generally like very high up on net worth Five and seconds. plays on side lanes more so than running around mid lane and smokes. You know, it's very uncommon to see him on like a well he did play the sand king which looked pretty good but you know no centaurs no no yeah. pangoliers right like mm -hmm. much more of a you know tanky beefy high net worth in your face kind of an offline player yeah. morana is the last one uh, getting removed by og as they have the pick coming out of this and in terms of Netta's heroes that he has played still in the pool, uh, it would only be Sand King and Viper uh, cool. in your face. We have the Wyvern left in here too, which is also an amazing hero versus Drow and TB. Ooh. And Nine's Wyvern, pretty good as well if they want to go for that mid. But they uh, OG goes for the Naga Siren, so that is the no-tail Naga. I feel like, I feel like Timbersaw Probably. would be very good for Tundra for 33 if you wanted to play it. I think it's a very, very hard matchup for Jaw Ranger. I think she gets forced off the lane uh, around level 6, which is pretty much all you want to ask for. You know, if you could force the enemy core off the lane at with when you get your ultimate, 
that generally means that your five minute catapult will just be arriving and then you can do a significant amount of tower damage if not take the tower and Timbersaw does a really good job of that right because he just tanks the tower for the catapult and tower goes bye bye what about the snake and clockwork as well if we're looking for his other heroes yeah uh, I would not mind that as well. I think the Clockwork plus Furion or Timbersaw could potentially still be very good. Remember, this could also still be Sumail Naga and Topsun mm -hmm. Drought. True. But unlikely, I would guess. And the Alk is still in there as a possible next pick that Shiver mentioned. I wasn't really expecting... I mean, as true, you said, true. it's got its issues versus like the TB for sure, but it's also just like a, you know, our strategy... This works for us of uh, making the drought yes. humongous. We can think about some sub heroes. There's, it's probably not going to go Magnus. Could go. Could go Centaur. Very good with Drow. Helps yeah. with the spacing, especially if they don't Mars, which we probably don't think they will based on three three zero pool. Yeah, has Seb played Mars? I don't think so. Not too meta. This tournament. I don't no. know if he's ever. I don't know if he's. Oh yeah, yeah. He has played Mars before, I think, or maybe that was a Topson Mars here. Hold on, look at this game. <laughs> Seb Brew. No, Seb played Timber. So No Tail played five Mars in this game. Um, yeah, so I don't think that they play Mars on core. So that is maybe not a concern. <laughs> they decide to go with Caudal. Oh, and they get burnt. They get real burnt. Snag timber the Timber is, away. Timber is very good against Terrorblade throughout the entirety of the game, I think. And those two supports do not concern you in the slightest. Coddle and oh, Abba. Yeah. Yeah, it's... That's rough. Is there is there a reason for them, perhaps, to run... They, they've done this during the PC at some point, to have 33 on the Abaddon. Because at the moment, they're also one of the main issues. Yeah. They don't have any stuns. And Winter Wyvern, yes, could be support, could also very well be a mid laner for Tundra. So... Still a lot of flexibility. I, I think that's probably mid. I thought they were going to Zeus, honestly. I thought they were going to, like, the Coddle Zeus cheese strat, going like, the massive damage or something, but I think that's a 9 Wyvern, and, and it's uh, versus one Agi hero already, whereas I think this really shines when it's trying to abuse the percent-based damage. I mean, there's other benefits, too, but... I feel like they're outdrafting themselves at the moment. Yeah. I really think Tundra is on the the bad side of this draft right now i think that there's i think wyvern works really well when you have like some combos with it at the very least and in, in that game they had a priestess of the moon for snaking the marana so it was always just winter's curse into five second arrow into dead heroes and they really lack a lot of control and that's kind of what terrible needs in games is control so he can just right click people but they actually have no stuns outside of winter's curse and terrible can't do damage during winter's curse so uh, it's going to be a lot of disengage from OG, and it's gonna, I feel like it's going to be really hard for Terrible to connect on damage in this game. All right, maybe they're going to Snay Wyvern, actually. Put the Wyvern as a 4 with the 3-3 three, three Abba and go for a Lina. But why would you do... Because I think the core Wyvern's really bad. <laughs> but I don't know. Then, yeah, no, I think that they should have taken the Timbersaw, or they, they should have taken their offlaner with their first pick in the second phase. They already seen the carry. They saw what is most likely both supports in Naga and Lion, but they chose to take their their Caudal, and then they go yeah. Wyvern. It's like they already wanted Wyvern, right? Because I don't mm -hmm. think, yeah. oh, okay, they have a Timbersaw now. Let's get Wyvern. That's, that's not a thing. So they wanted Caudal into Wyvern. I'm curious what that last pick is going to be to tie it all together. I'm just having a hard time seeing it at the moment. I think they have the right idea with the bands. That that's like, looks like what it has to be, right? Someone who jumps in first, because right now there, there's not really anyone. Like assuming it is going to be the mid wyvern, and this is a three three hero coming out. There's basically just mm -hmm. centaur left now, right? Yeah, and I think the I, I did mention Furion, but that's not what they need. You're right. Like they need somebody that can go in and start fights from the off lane. Dragonite and Sand King are would have, are probably the best because they actually can just go like blink dagger first item. Most of the other offlaners want to, you know, they want to go back for that hood or vanguard first. I'm opening up my hero list to see if there's any blink dagger rushers in here anymore. Not a lot of time left either for Tundra. And Twenty is it, seconds instead of bonus it, time. It's Mars time, I think. I don't know. There's also Doom. Oh, oh they take the brew. A, okay. It's a brew. Um, not but, the not the most successful hero or popular hero. This uh, these qualifiers. 
Dude, that's scary. Hex and Drow Silence. I have seen so many Brews die to this exact combo. I feel like they first picked Terrorblade, and then they didn't pick any heroes that were good with Terrorblade. <laughs> so I really favor OG here, and I'm mm. really scared for Tundra because I think OG just is... They have this momentum now, right? They, they probably feel like they should have won the first game. They came back in the second game, and they did win the second game. And this third game, they've just got to be having so much confidence, I think. I got flipped. I thought they were going to 9 Zeus, and I thought they were going to Brewmaster Seb. And we wound up with this. All right. Cool. That is a lot of... Uh, so what I really don't like about the Brewmaster right now is that you basically don't do Blink Build. You do the eggs, and so you like you ulti on a high ground to run into the fight. Right, and they have so much good vision right now between uh, No Tail with the illusions being spammed out with the Zeus and everything that I feel like it's gonna be really hard for Tundra to actually get that first jump. They're gonna hear this panda or see this panda somehow, and OG are just so good at that like the collapse where they just like fall back and then as that ultimate's ending, they just jump back in on top of you. Right, this looks like a very hard game for Tundra to me. It does indeed. Anything to add to that, Peter? I, you know, hopefully we'll see some epic back and forths on paper, OG for sure. But as these last two games have showed us, you know, it's anybody's game. Yep. Anybody's game. Well, uh, whoever takes this game will be on match point for these grand finals. Of course, winner goes to TI-10. Will OG be able to defend their title? Will Fada captain his first squad to TI? Let's see who gets to be on match point in this third game of the grand finals with Lyrical and AUI. Thank you so much, Shiver. And yeah, Aoi, I'm, I'm looking at this draft. The panel seems really convinced it's like a complete and total outdraft here uh, with, the, you know, struggling for the Terra Blade. They have some great heroes against it. Is there any weaknesses that you're seeing in the OG draft at all? Or is it, is it just all looking good for them right now? I think this is a really big outdraft by OG as well. I echo the exact same sentiments that Peter shared. I think they should pick the Timbersaw on 16, like for their third pick. And like they didn't pick it because they were scared that Thompson will play the Draw Ranger mid and they get a carry that's good versus Timbersaw. But mm. the thing is, I mean, you, you've broken draft structure by first picking your carry. You're going to lose something in the draft. And right now, like you end up, you have no stuns. We saw last game, they early picked Sumail's Terrible. They had Nyx, Hoodwink, and Invoker to allow them to right click. This game, it's like only on the Brewmaster split. Maybe with some Solar Bind, but it's, it's, I don't think it's enough. They don't have the outscale against Draw Ranger and Zeus, two heroes that specifically outscale Terrorblade. So the onus is on them to sort of control this game and win it fast, but I don't think they're going to be Good. able to do it. Good. All right. Well, we'll see if uh, they can exceed expectations here. It's a team that's been able to do that multiple times. And OG with, you know, just the experience of playing so many freaking games, drafting so many times in this best of fives, uh, they've been able to come out with a couple of different, I mean, arguably, could you say three draft wins so far? I, I would say so. I, I think they've out strategized Tundra pretty hard. Um, in this series so far. I think Tundra, I mean, I don't think to they expected to win game one or two based on the game plan. Honestly, like, it was 1-0 for Tundra, but I don't think Tundra felt comfortable in the drafts. I think OG still felt good about that. You know, it's just some play stuff, and you sort of want that to happen. You want to be playing well, and, like, you want to be messing up easy things to correct, I guess right. I should say. That's fair. Well, we'll see if they uh, can sort of outplay their position yet again uh, as we go into this game number three now. Um, no Tail again playing on the support. Naga Siren has the Orb of Venom, a couple salves. Mirror Image, he's ready to go. One and six in the qualifiers. The lone win was No Tail against Nigma. Uh, all no six of those player. other games are on core, though. So on support, I think it's one to zero. Okay. So uh, if, if Tundra do win this game, I think it's, it has to be on the back of Nine's Winter Wyvern. This hero is typically pretty weak in lane, so maybe they'll make something happen because I, I don't know how the lane goes for Zeus. I've literally never seen this matchup. I don't know if it's ever happened in a high MMR pub, but I should see Winter Wyvern like farming pretty comfortably in this one. Up top, they've already popped Metamorphosis. Skitter doing some nice damage there onto Seb, but likewise taking that Timber Chain first and they're trying to keep whatever pressure they can. This mirror image start is kind of annoying to deal with. 
uh, by the Naga Siren. Uh, the the illusions just start giving, you know, you, you just run them down a little bit there. You can do some body block stuff as well if it goes well. But he's going to pull this wave, uh, no tail, and actually going to take it to the right because of that play that we saw last time. Can Fada connect him? He actually lets it go. Okay. Weird stuff in the laning stage. It's a classic. That's what we've seen a ton of times. Uh, yeah, and this, they're going to pull it back. This is good for OG because Skinner committed Metamorphosis. So now he only gets to play one creep wave on meta. I mean, it's not like it's too bad for them. And Fada, he does prevent them from going around and denying a wave there. But it's a cool play coming out from No Tail. Right. Well, there are other lanes that exist. Right now you can see down bottom, Snaking playing on the Coddle with 3-3, uh, three, three, taking that Thunderclap at the early goings here. Uh, curious what his build ends up being. This is a hero that definitely has found some like revitalization around the Aghanim Scepter and all that fun stuff. Uh, currently, I think that he has the the Helm of Iron Will coming out again. So Tundra just really believing in this idea of a Helm of the Dominator creep early. Yeah, I think I'd like to see them use it a bit more cohesively as a team this time. Last time he got Helm and he sort of just played alone. I think this item should make you strong enough to like put pressure on your opponent. But so far, like Sumail's having the lane of his life. He's ten to ten to six now, and three three only has three CS. Yeah, this is a tough one for him, definitely. Sumail keeping that uh, pressure on finds the deny there, and you can see that uh, Snaking in the moment at least is just farming up that small camp. That, that's pretty to cool. The bull. They got the lane equilibrium right. So what you do as a safe lane against the enemy pulling it in front of the tower is generally you use pole, cramp, pole camps. But Snaking, he just blasts it twice. He gets his level 2 off it, and the lane is going to stay in front of 3-3's tower for probably this entire lane. I would say blast it like this, of course. Not sure about this one. Yeah, 3-3. Three, three. They want to ensure that they got that range creep. Takes a lot of damage for the trouble, but Toxa actually is going to get chased down a little bit here. Does have another Earth Spike back up, and 3-3, uh, three, three, I think he might be dead here. As the right clicks come through, Sumail draws first blood. They have the Hex afterwards, and Snaking also will fall. But Sumail got a lot of damage to the creeps, and meanwhile, up top, they also take down Seb. Mid lane so as both well? safe laners, a Ooh. chance. Looking for it. Nine, chasing underneath the tower. Right click's coming through, but it doesn't look like it's quite enough. Ooh, Splitter Blast. Stay close. Socks it down bottom. Snaking able to find that finish. So there's just massive action all around the map right now. Yeah, and just a little bit of overextension from Tundra in the bottom lane. I think they really got baited by Socks. He's like sort of manning up against a lot of creeps, but he understood his limits completely. There is this huge wave. Typically, Caudal pressures carries really well when you have a lot of creeps under tower because you can just sort of blast them. I think 3-3 is going to pull the next wave. Oh, yeah. Nicely played by him. Socks are going to eat a uh, Illuminate Blast right there as they try and uh, keep the pressure on to Sumail. Definitely not a hero that like loves farming underneath the tower with the creeps hitting him constantly, uh, but... In the meantime, 3-3 three, three. throws that Cinder Brew out now onto the creeps. They'll get the immolation and eventually get killed off. And Soxa, another Illuminate Blast coming through. Will it quite connect? Not on the mark. So they're doing a good job after a rough early game of uh, keeping this pressure on. Yeah, 3-3, three, three. he's just playing his uh, standard Dota of making the lane as non-Dota as possible. Pulling okay. waves, aggroing your opponent, just doing anything, just like in last game, to be as annoying as possible. And honestly, it is working out for him, because you can imagine, and the CS is still horrible, right? Like, draws 28 to his 11. But you can imagine, if they got double killed and he wasn't doing this stuff, this lane would be like 100 to 0. He's even going to drag the wave all the way in front of his tier 3, so he can deny a wave from Sumail. Whoa. Long walk. And, and I mean, at the same time, you're seeing that, you know, Timber, he's getting his levels uh, right about on the same mark as what's going on with the uh, the Brewmaster. So he's also not doing great in terms of CS. Mid has been very even. Topson and Nine both getting after it here uh, as they're almost to level six. There are or more stacks that are built up in the jungle for the Radiant, though. Uh, and you can imagine that those might get taken eventually by Seb as a little bit of a catch up mechanic because we've seen these Timbers do time and again. Yeah, I think OG's identity in a lot of this qualifier has been getting those stacks off. I'm honestly, it's part of the reason why I'm surprised he didn't take Timbersaw. Because he has to be one of the best heroes if he has a good lane at going in and just taking all of your opponent's stacks. But we'll see, like, they, Tundra, they do have some idea of a Timbersaw, right? They shut him down really hard in this lane. Fada TP in mid. As the reaction comes, they find that kill. Snaking will get a return onto Soxa, but... 
The bigger one is nine going down and killing Fata. Uh, he was trying to TP back out and away, and no, he, he was just trying too low. to help um, mid lane. Yeah. He uses TP, but Topsy pops the OT and he just kills Wyvern. That's Wyvern using his first curse. Just a good rotation from Soxa coming in behind the uh, Winter Wyvern. They catch him. Just like that. No tail. Gonna pop the mirror image. A lot of illusions. <laughs> so many of them mid. Uh, does have three points up in the Splinter Blast right now for nine. So talk to me a little bit about this Winter Wyvern mid. What What's the strength of it as Snaking is going to run away from all these no-tail illusions? The main strength of it is that the Agnims is one of the more busted upgrades right now. In the last patch, or made a patch before that, it just got given 25% move speed upon activation. It refreshes the Arctic Burn duration, so you're constantly slowing and doing percent damage. And Wyvern, he just has like this good 50 damage time. Arctic Burn is one of the best spells in Dota, and I know this because in Ability Draft, it's picked very early all the time. I mean, you, you can, it's like a weird idea, right? But Ability Draft yeah. is just how good the spell is, independent of the hero, and Arctic Burn is up there. Well, something to keep an eye on, as uh, if they can get to that unimpeded, and if Nine can make it to that point, uh, could start to see some pretty strong performances here, uh, particularly, you know, against the the tankier heroes that we might end up seeing later on, whether that's the Timbersar, whether that ends up being a Naga going... Well, I guess it's not going to be Naga going for anything, really, because it's the support, but we'll see. Uh, and we can even see Knoxville in our stats chat. He said that Winter Wyvern's first spell, Arctic Burn, is 60% win rate, which is the highest de uh, from impact from standard deviations of any... I don't know what he said. He said something okay, no, you can, It's the best spell in ability said. draft. He said to, I, I dropped out of college. I'm uneducated. You can't say these words to me. That's fine. We'll get through it together. Um, you saw right there as well, uh, Seb getting level 6 and now feeling very confident in this lane. Skitter still staying up here with Fada, interestingly enough. Uh, are they going to try and keep him in this area? Uh, he's keeping out of there. Out. Yeah. I mean, Fada will try to drag the creep wave off. Oh. Ab oh. Nine? No, he's, he's, he's going to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with Topson, uh, but was already taking a ton of damage there. The lightning bolt's just bursting him down low. Don't be able to Topson get does have that ultimate back up, so he has to be a bit careful. Fada's going to try to just sort of sit top and absorb any EXP that comes in, but it's very scary. I mean, he's playing against a Timbersaw and Naga that just got him, and they've managed to like create a double wave to hit this tower with. Hmm. Yeah, that tier one's starting to fall. We'll see what Fada decides to do. Similar story as though not the double wave is down bottom. They have that Helm of the Dominator creep going for the wraparound with 3-3. He's also got that ulti up. Uh, won't quite be able to connect there uh, with the Illuminate spam, but Snaking trying to queue it up again, and Soxa catches him. Spots him, Solar Bind. Oh, and moving on in with the tornado, slow and steady, it burns him down, and Fata will die up top. So both supports going down in a very interesting spray there. Uh, not sure what that one was, but they managed to trade off supports again. Very even. Uh, uh, last game, what the big difference maker was was that Seb was able to take this top tower and then TP bottom to defend it. But I think they've got enough pressure this time on 3-3 that it's just going to be a tower change. Yeah, you can even see Fada comes up top. He doesn't want to let this tower die for free. If you can drag the creep wave off the tower against Timbersaw, it's not like he has any real tower damage. It's only the creep wave. Fada's going to drag this wave maybe even to his Terrorblade in the jungle and defend his top tower that way. And nobody is coming down bottom to defend this one. 3-3 looks like he's going to get it for free. As Fata, and also that you can see here, Fata's connecting this up uh, with the Terrorblade illusion. So you're still getting farm on Skitter from this all the while he's, uh, you know, over on the other side of the map in his own triangle at this point. But they will kill off that illusion, and now Fata taking it on another trip. We'll give the high five, and then eventually end up dying. So big rotation up top to secure that tower. Tundra, they've already taken bottom. Yeah, and I think Fado's really happy with that. He saw all these heroes. He got a lot of EXP. He's going to be level 6 with the book. And now there's the space for Terrorblade to play Terrorblade Dota. Oh, they want to go. He used meta to farm Ancients, and they're chaining it into a play mid. They have the Brewmaster split. They have the Helmet Dominator. They feel strong. I mean, meta's about to wear out. They, they, they Do they want to fight this? Topson's in the area. They're using the last bit of this to try and get the tower down. But as meta wears off, will they come to defend on OG? 
And they, they have a wagon here, so even just forcing OG to sort of sit around and defend. But, oh, oh, curse! Winner's curse! Chase down, Splinter Blast dead, no song! Nicely played there by nine to find that. And now, with this Helm of the Dominator creep that's turned into a melee creep, uh, it looks like they're gonna get a significant amount of damage onto this tier one tower, maybe they're, even claim it. They're just killing the tower. They do get the deny on OG. Wait, are they going Looking for, for more? Thinking about it. Slow down onto Sumail, but the Hex and the back out. That Gust saving his life. You know, we were saying at the start that it's really hard for Terrorblade to right click people, but maybe the Solar Bind, like that was a big stone drought. Solar Bind combined with Arctic Burn. Like if Nine just tags off his opponents once with Witchblade, which he's going for, or Aghanims, maybe that's enough for Terrorblade to be able to right click. This game is, like, my understanding of Dota, it's it's hard in these games, you know, because this is so different than anything I've personally experienced, like mid Winter Warvens, some Naga Siren 5s, no real stuns on Tundra, but a ton of, like, slow disables. And maybe they their read on the draft in the game is completely different because they're not looking out of this at all. I thought this game would be way easier for OG. Well, they are, at the moment at least, staying very even. An OG with a slight lead. Uh, but I, I guess that this is also a question of, like, at what point does OG's draft start to really come online? Were you expecting it mainly to be around, like, the Timber Saw getting that tower taken? Or do you think it's more so when, like, a Lion Blink Dagger comes out? What's what's sort of that, that moment that OG are going to be looking for? Well, the, they're a bit too far from Lion Blink Dagger. I mean, the one weakness of OG's lineup is that none of the cores really make moves, right? Like, they're okay sitting back and farming half the map, but if you can't make moves, sometimes it gives too much of an opportunity for your opponent to open up the game. Like, Drow Ranger, she's not going to run at you. Same for Zeus and same for Timbersaw. Timbersaw, he's going to shove his face in, but it's not, like, killing you in the same way. Mm. Honestly, I think a lot of it is because of how well Fada and Skitter were able to combine at top lane. Like, they destroyed the Timbersaw who had the counter pick onto Terrible. I mean, right now he's okay, he's caught up in farm a lot. But, you know, they've taken two towers, the map's opened up, and I think Skidder's feeling pretty good. He's comfortable using meta to just farm because they have so much map control. Oh, nine. Playing things very dangerous there. Popped the Arctic burn to farm, and now he's gonna TP out. The oh, Soxer reveals the creep, himself. He's TPing on the smoked up creep from Tundra. They want to fight here. Interesting, okay. Uh, Sumail, they are going... Oh, there's a couple different places he could end up at. And they spot him over here. Sumail, gotta be careful. They're they're right by a tier one tower. This is dangerous. TP's coming in right afterwards. Sumail trying to buy some time with that Gust. Can they kill him off in time? Sumail, down low, dead. And they get the lift up on Inaga, so no song to turn this back around. Seb trying to focus now on to nine. He's brought down low. Zeus in the area, able to get the run down and that kill. Fada now trying to back out. They've already used the Bruce split. There's nothing else left in the tank for him. Soxa will go down. Snake King looking for the big Illuminate Blast. They've still got that creep in the area, but they have lost two apiece, and it looks like Fada also going to fall. So the final tally ends up being a two for three. The caveat is that Terrorblade's still farming during all of that. Yeah, and Drow died, right? Like, this is going to be the carry this game. I mean, maybe Zeus is sort of the carry. And even like uh, Seb, he can scale really hard this game. But again, I think they're happy with that from Tundra. I want to point out what 3-3 did that fight. Because most players, including myself, you know, you have problems microing the Brewmaster LT. But said he stomped Naga when she TP'd in into a lift up. So she could not song and save uh, Sumail on the Draw Ranger there. It's just incredibly good, precise micro. And even though it's a 2 for 3, I think they're really happy with that engagement. Uh, and of course, waiting for their timings on the side of Tundra. You've got this Witchblade that's going to be coming out eventually. And Terrorblade, in the meantime, going back for his Sanjin Yasha. Uh, we, we've seen that Scotty timing be something that's very scary as well. Sumail, will he get the time that he needs to get to those items? So we'll have to keep an eye on it as uh, Hurricane Pike is queued up for the moment. They're trying to invade a little bit and just make OG feel slightly uncomfortable. But the same type of thing is going on up top as uh, Seb and 3-3 with Snake King are sort of squaring each other up, eyeing each other up. And 3-3 is going straight into that Aghanim Scepter, so nothing to keep that silence off of him. <laughs> yeah, I think he's pretty much just going to play at range with the Cinder Brew and Primus. But you even see in his build, like he has a max Thunderclap because he understands he's never really going to go in to use it. I would, I wanted to say, like, I'd like to see Tundra. Oh, they're going on to Brewmaster Top. He has no TP scroll. 
Doesn't have anything. 3-3 three, three is super dead as they run him down, go for the kill, <laughs> trying to get the KS there on uh, Thompson. But uh, nonetheless, that's, uh, that's Thunder God's Wrath down for a little bit. Maybe he was worried too about like people coming in there and you know if you get Bruce split off and the rest of Tundra's nearby, that could have been a, a turnaround. No tail. Solar Bind, push back, Song of the Siren. And are they trying they to fight, fight this? this. Uh, okay, they have Gust. Ready to go. Fada gets slowed. That uh, Seb is in the area now. Fada starts to drop down low. Nine is there too, trying to keep Thompson out of the fight. Can they bring him down? God, look at the damage out from nine. He absolutely wrecked him there. But he doesn't have Arctic burn back up and it's a hex out from that lion. Meanwhile, Timber saw gonna get lifted up as Snaking gets the pushback. Sumail's starting to drop down low and he goes down. So they keep him out of the fight on nine for a little while, but now No Tail with no song, there's nowhere left for him to go either. And now, still look at this. No, Sim, he's stuck on that little cliff there. He's gonna come in and try and take down the rest of those stacks, but he's lost a lot. The rest of his buddies are gone, and the right click's coming through. Will it be enough to kill him? This dude is mighty tanky. Right now, sitting with 46 armor, but they will back out. Stun comes out now onto Fada, able to find that finish. But they got the Drow again. Yeah, and another good metamorphosis and good fight for Tundra. I think nine in that fight, he managed to hunt down Thompson, just him and one Terrorblade illusion, sort of slowed him down and ran at the Zeus. Looking good for them, definitely. Right now, at this point in time, Tundra, they are hitting a lot of things, but they still need an answer for this Timbersaw. Currently the highest net worth in the game, and Seb has just gone for this build to make him so difficult to kill. Queuing up that Sanjin Kaya next. Right now, I think he's pretty much unkillable for Tundra's side, just because Lotus Orb is going to take off Arctic Burn and the Witch's Blade from Winter Arvin. But I think as soon as Aghanim's finishes, you can't, I mean, you can purge it once, but he'll just hit you again and reapply it. And then they'll have damage. I think Tundra is sort of waiting for that. Fada, he's he's in there deep. He's just a boy, <laughs> off on a journey. This is just the Fada classic. Oh, and look, the Helm of the Dominator creeps soaking in the damage. Fada getting away on nothing. And he just baited like on Zeus game. out. Right? Easy. Oh, they catch they catch Saxa bottom. Down bottom. Oh man. And and again, look at how close he is to that blink dagger right now on Saxa. This, this entire game, huge. I was thinking they need to kill Saxa bottom. I'm just like, they don't really have stuns to do it, you know? From like 800 gold to all the way to now, he's sort of sitting in that bottom lane, farming it up. But nine, he just takes it into his own hand, solo killing him with the Winter Warrior. Sort of showing why, you know, they showed it last time. I and mean, everyone was sort of, is this hero broken? Is it just strong? Was it good just that game? I think he's showing a lot of prowess on this hero, and it's, it's looking scary. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, if you can find these supports and sort of accelerate your game, it looks really good. It's up top 3-3. Three, three. Gets uh, a round and a salvo of Seb spells. Currently, what is he now? What, 3,000 gold behind? Uh, but they're throwing out the little Harpy Stormcrafter. Silence, the rest of the team is coming over. Seb, is he gonna fall? Him. The chase down is coming and he's taking a lot of damage. They pop metamorphosis for this one. Pearl Boulder comes in, going to connect. And from downtown, Seb tries to get all the song of the siren though. Keeping him alive. Oh, wait, but 3 3, he's on him with the panda. Trying to chase. Who do they find? No tail. Still escaping from this one, but the rest of the team is here. Winner's Curse back off cooldown in eight seconds. They could look for a turnaround. Metamorphosis is still going. Do they want to fight anymore without their Timber Saw? It's a bold proposition, but oh gee, they're a bold team. Looks like they're not going to go for it. Oh, and that was so close. I want to shout out to Nine right there because he actually waited until Seb used his Lotus Orb. He slowed him just with the Splinter Blast, just so he could get the extra damage from Arctic Burn and the Witch's Blade. It almost made the difference, but Noto just coming in with a clutch TP into Song. I'm assuming he TP'd. I think he did. But yeah, they barely say Seb. That would have been a huge kill because anytime you're playing one of these tanky heroes, Bristleback, uh, Centaur, Timbersaw, if you're like sort of going too far, and the enemy punishes you, it's not even about the kill, it's about like the fear that strikes you. And now OG, they realize the enemies use Metamorphosis, they use Caught, they used um, Brewmaster LT, they're going for Roshan. They're but not going they... for Roshan, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> they were going for Roshan, Snake King, right on top of it. They finally have a hero that can kind of scout Rosh uh, with that Illuminate Blast and uh, get a little bit of vision from it as well. But it does look like towards mid, they're running. Oh, they also have an Alpha Wolf right now. And Look, this is, whoa, scary stuff. 
Do, do you see Seb's HP? He just got chunked by yeah. just a Witch's Blade and Arctic Burn. I mean, he did not notice an orb off it right away, but he actually doesn't have any magic resistance. He thinks he's playing against, you know, Brewmaster, Terrorblade, uh, supports that don't do that much damage, and Nine, he's he's pumping out DPS on this Winter Wyvern. All right, well, looks like they're having some real uh, lag issues right now, but the game about ready to go back and get underway. So a couple other things. Uh, we've got ourselves three points in Ensnare for Naga Siren, as well as the Meteor Hammer. The rest of the team wrapping around right now. Lion, newly minted Blink Dagger. Zeus has this Octarine Core, so he's just going to be trying to spam out as many spells as he can. But the question is, how are they going to take this fight? Are they even going to take this fight? Coddle isn't even here, and he's got Mechanism. And on the other side of the map is Terrorblade with no meta. I think Tundra are just going to spam them here. They have a lot of spam between the Cinder Brew, the Splinter Blast. And it's not like... See, they don't know about Sax's Blink Dagger. So in their eyes, they don't think they can get jumped here. But I think OG, they're going to... They're going to get some kills here. Like, Seb, maybe the reason why he's not Lotus Orbing it off right away is you bait them in a bit closer because he knows his teammates are smoked. Like, OG is the type of team, I think, who would want to make those plays like that. That's why they always live with, like, 100 HP. They're always baiting each other, right? It's fair. It's, and to be honest, though, also, like, with this pause, it actually probably helps Tundra a lot. Like, the, the timing of this one and, like, you know, thinking a little bit about, okay, you know, Lion, he's been farming for this long. There's a chance he could have Blink Dagger or something. I, I want to see what their response is, if they just back out right afterwards or what ends up happening. But uh, regardless, we'll keep our eyes on it. Uh, the other thing, actually, is the Shard coming out for Zeus afterwards. Um, so again, there's a little jump away action to get some escaping. I mean, he's still going to get chased down by Wyvern, depending upon how these fights go. Hey, that's a it's a pretty good slow. It's a hundred percent for two point five seconds. So if Wyvern's the one that's closest to him, maybe you can just use it to just get a bit away from. Him. And here we go back into the game. And yeah, nine backs out a little bit, gets to the other side. They're gonna pop that glyph, and hanging out over here, throwing out the spam. Seb, hanging on to that Lotus Orb. The wrap is coming. Soxa looking for an opening, Meteor Hammer down, and Tower dead. Fada, is he the one that gets caught, or is it going to be nine? Do they jump? They catch him. A Fodic Shield not able to get out. Oh, the silence. Down low, nine trying to live. They get the Winner's Curse off, though, and able to turn this back around. They take down Zeus. Huge kill, and nobody on Tundra dies. Seb trying to get out of there now. Fada will end up falling. Skitter now looking for the chase. Seb. Dropping down real low with the reflection, with all the right clicks coming in, with that Arctic Burn and the Witch's Blade. But it does look like he'll manage to get back. So they trade in the end. An ABBA for a Zeus, but they also lost that Tier 1 Tower mid. That was without meta, without Bruce split. I think Tundra are really happy about that engagement. I mean, the thing about Tundra's lineup is they have this huge power spike coming up in 200 gold with Nine's Aghanim Scepter. Seb is not going to be able to frontline versus that item. I mean, he's he's going for BKB now, but that puts him sort of on a timer in the fights. He doesn't have any... I would really like him to pick up a Cloak this game. At least something to mitigate how much magic damage is going to come out for Winter Wyvern. Where's those neutral items at? Let's go. You need to grab yourself a freaking Nether Shawl or something oh, later yeah, if on. If you got a Nether Shawl, that would be better. <laughs> he does have... Like, you can't really be mad about getting Essence Ring. But I think That's Nether true. Shawl would have been really good this game. Well, that Aghanims is completed now. And... Well, he's going for the Silver Edge Nyx as well. Ooh. That, it that just lets you nifty. get good curses off. We can even see last fight, Thompson got 100 to 0 from a curse, one right click from Wyvern, and a Splinter Blast. He just died. That's your mid hero with, like, sort of. I mean, I was going to say high net worth in this game, but he's oh. actually quite low. Nine. <laughs> they, they have to pop the. Uh... The ulti right now to get out of there. No tails. He's thinking about turning onto this. Oh, no Meteor Hammer. But he does have the net. Nine tries to back away. Net comes out. Slow and steady attempt here at a kill. Nine in trouble. Drop down low. Soxa, he has that blink ready. Jumps in. Oh, with the juke. Nine able to get away. Oh my god. I can't believe they didn't get that kill. And towards mid, they're going at the same time on to Seb. Trying to find this kill. Uh, another pause. Ooh, you hate to see it. That's that's not great. We got some uh, some misclicks going on as Wyvern is going to DC. I you think know, I think they're what? having some internet issues. I mean, it's an online qualifier. It happens, oh, and really unfortunate. This happened to they're all disconnecting, and 
Ah, that just sucks because they're playing so well, but spikes are going to change the game for you a lot. Yeah, that that is a problem. Um, four D seed now, and they are going to start to reconnect. So, I mean, it's good news that at least one of them is staying in there, but it's it seems like it's just sort of stuttery internet, and they're reconnecting to try and like refresh everything. Um, you know, you should trust my opinion because I definitely know nothing about the internet. <laughs> and how it gets into my computer, um, which is definitely also what happens. But uh, regardless, hopefully they'll be back in here in a moment. We can start this back up again. Yeah, really unfortunate. I think Tundra, they're at, um, they're in Poland at like, wait, what just happened? That was weird. You in? I, I'm still in it, yeah. But that there was like some weird flash that went out. It's like a, a glitch in the matrix going on. It's very spooky. Are right. you live? I, I oh, believe yeah, the lag. I'm lagging, apparently. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're back into the game now, so hopefully you can uh, keep your eye on what's going on here. But it looks like, oh, gee, they'll get away with Seb. Was that another meta used? Or... Yeah, it had it... to be. I mean, they do have a cool combo where you can just keep following your Terrorblade and Chakra Magicking it to reduce the meta. Wait, he's still in Metamorphosis. I just can't. I can't yeah. see it because I reconnected. It looks like he's right. melee and throwing out these random globs. It looks and like that to me that. as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they have Agnums on to 33 now. They have the Agnums on 9, but they don't have the meta, so the timing has now become a bit weird. Honestly, good play by Seb from like, sort of, he's playing aggressive, but sort of towing the line where he, he baits out the metamorphosis, makes the enemy think they can kill him, and they can't. So now their timing sort of falls apart a bit. So what does this next dream fight look like for OG? Because I'm seeing all these big items come out. Like you talk about the Ags, both for the Wyvern and for 3-3, three, three, and you know, obviously the Scotty almost completed. Well, what's OG looking for here? As I they think hit? a Naga Siren Sleep into bursting the Kado or Brewmaster would be really good. Wait, do they see him? So they no, see inside you, okay. the pit. You can't see that creep, but it can oh. see inside the pit. There's a line. Oh, they, they see it oh, now. Yeah, yeah, Seb just saw it. Yeah, he's got to be careful now. Walks forward, 3-3, three, three, pops the ulti, Seb, he's kind of in no man's land, but Soxa, he found nine. Pops in, trying to kill him off, seeing if they can burst him in time, but look at all the heal, are you kidding me? Able to live through it, Fada trying to keep him alive, and the winner's curse kind of weirdly plays Seb, not able to get that timber chain off to kill off nine. The run away, they're still keeping this Naga under control, No Tail, starting to drop down low, Topson goes for the jump away, but eventually they will beat him down. And in the meantime, Nine has been just keeping Seb out of this fight this whole time, and he lives through it all. Barely able to get out of that one, back towards the rest of the fight, Topson is now going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Skinner. And they also have Sumail, the Sunder comes out, the right clicks, spamming onto that Drow Ranger. And he's gonna try and run, but will he be able to get out? No TP, no, uh, no TP cancel. <laughs> that was a beast play from Thompson at the end there, but oh. like all this lyrical, holy shit! Nine got gone by everything. Saxa finds him. It's the best target. They, they drop Zeus out. They drop Finger, Hex, Stun, Timber Soul spells. He gets healed up by the Mech Pipe from Staking, itemizing perfectly to save Nine. Plus some Abaddon heals, pumps the Essence Ring, and he lives throughout that fight. He that just was wild. How often do you hear, like, guys, we lost a fight because we stunned the enemy Winter Wyvern for seven seconds and we couldn't kill him <laughs> with a Zeus Timbersaw finger lineup? Like, it right. makes no sense, but this man, he's just, he's staying alive and, like, even while running, he randomly hits people and does a ton of damage. And all during that, you're focusing Winter Wyvern. Skitter is beating all of you up, and Tundra, they get a good fight, they get Roshan. My idea of the draft is completely exposed. I have no idea how they're winning this game. They're just playing fantastically. I mean, so here's the thing too, right? Like you, you normally anticipate that you're going to be able to bring down that Wyvern. After that fight, Nine is level 19 right now, 2100 HP. And then on top of that, sitting with 17 armor. Like it, it, it's, it, sometimes these conceptions of, of how you think this hero is going to be able to live, it just ends up not being true. And uh, Nine showing that, that this Witchblade build, getting that extra armor from it and uh, you know, obviously having all the heals on his team, he can tank through it. Really, really good stuff from Tundra as they have again found a way uh, to either A, outplay their draft, or B, they had the next level play and just understood that the draft was better. So one of the two is yeah. true. And I think even in the last fight, like we saw in Winter Wyvern, they're all focusing him. But if you focus a target in teamfights, it sort of breaks your formation 
and it might make you like have a really bad team fight because of Z formation. Nine, he got a really good Winter's Curse because they're all committing on him. Noto doing something really cool, sending illusions to both block the enemy ancients and kill the Bounty Rune. You know, Tundra, they've been annoying all game, like all series, especially that game too. But I think Noto, he's been making those small little plays to eco the advantage. And now look smoke at this, the smoke up. They find one. No tail, Sumail, they're both there. Thinking it might be an illusion. Oh, it's the real one. Reflections out now. Looking for the chase. 3 3. Spots out Sumail, but not going to be able to connect. Now they have both Aegis and Meta ready to go. Creep Wave pushing Sumail? in towards mid. Uh, okay. Winter's Curse punching himself, but they're going to back out. Nine might be in some trouble here. Oh, they don't want to go any further. So Song of the Siren down. Winter's Curse down. Topson. Being a butthead, constantly spamming out these waves and making it feel impossible to come and pressure this. Seth will... did manage to get bottom tier one, and he's putting a lot of pressure on bottom tier two during this. OG, they're just sort of waiting. They understand that they have this pressure on the map, so they're okay with just chilling a bit. Yeah, this has been Seb's place down here throughout most of the games. 3-3, three, three, gonna pop the, the ulti, goes for him. Roll Boulder, they got the lift up afterwards. Can the rest of OG catch any of these heroes on their way out? It doesn't look like it. So Seb, he's going to have to give up his life for this one as the right clicks come scaling through with the Scotty to get the lift up. Oh, they can't purge it. Oh, because the other one's lifted and trying to get out of there, Seb. Nah, it's not going to happen. And Skip, this is a first pick Terrorblade Lyrical. He's 3 to 0. He has over 10 CS. Sorry, he's 6 to 0. Has over 10 CS a minute as a first pick carry in the draft. I think he's against five, I would say these are like the five best Terrorblade counters in the game, potentially. Maybe PL is better than Drow Ranger, but they're but all the up there. Ones. He's I, like, it has to, he's playing super well and he's just executing every team fight. Oh, and they found oh, Thompson they again, oh winner's God. curse. Look at him, chunk him. Thompson didn't there stand a, a mid chance. There was a mid-hero there, by the way. That, that was, I mean, that's a Zeus at the end of the day, right? Like, oh man, they're they will catch Coddle. He has Hood Mech, he's no joke, and Shadowblade Dude. up from 9. He has Night Vision, he has Shadowblade. We thought Yo. they couldn't catch heroes because they have no stuns, but if 9 just solos people, he solo killed Saxon and Bottle Lane on his Lion, he's solo killing Zeus, he's just hunting everywhere. Doing a ton of damage. Uh, and now, like, look at this, the entire map is open. I mean, obviously OG, OG have two heroes down, but they, they don't feel comfortable leaving their base, and now they're likely on Tundra gonna try and get a bunch of map control. Uh, they are investing in these Blink Daggers, so both the Drow and the Terrorblade get one. Initiation feeling paramount in these fights. 30 seconds until Roche expires. About, there's the start of the fight. Seb, they've already popped the Borrowed Time, but the Thunder comes out afterwards. Seb gets caught by the Hurl Boulder 9, trying to survive through this one. Saking's there right on top of him. They get the Blinding Light pushback, and Seb trying to join with the rest of his team. The retreat is coming out, at least for the moment. There's a good blink away coming from the TB. They have Metamorphosis back up in 13 seconds, but again, you only have a little bit left. The Aegis about to expire right now. Chase away. Now, well, Fada brought down low. He's dead. No more Aegis. Gotta be careful. Jumps on top of Soxa, though. Finds that kill, and now they're trying to bring him down. Do they have enough for the kill? The Gust is there. Song of the Siren afterwards. Gonna have to cancel this one in a moment. Do they have enough? Meteor Hammer, not gonna get it off. Oh no, it didn't work, but can they bring him down in time? Skitter drop it down low, they eventually find the kill, but it's a triple kill for Nine, who chases down Seb with four heroes left alive and only Seb on OG. He too is gonna be in a world of hurt. They wiped them all. Nine is the real carry here. And honestly, a rare mis-execution. I didn't quite see if the Drow Sounds missed onto Wyvern or if Abaddon shielded it off, but they missed a Meteor Hammer after the sleep. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe no tell he didn't have an orb to toggle the timing perfectly with. Uh, he he yeah. does have treads for that, so maybe he overclicked or something. I don't know what happened. Anyways, 9, he gets a curse off onto Zeus and Drow Ranger, and basically 1v2s both of them. I mean, 3-3 was there hitting them, but they're like tickles compared to what Nine was doing to them. And Wyvern, this hero, this hero straight up looking broken. Like, I don't know what to say. I don't know how they can win this game unless Wyvern is a broken hero. But I don't think, like, anyone can play it. How Nine has moved this game, how he lanes, how he farms everything, it's so practice. And I know this guy, he's actually spammed this hero in pubs, by the way. I think he went, like, 15 and 2. I I'm surprised, like, no one is really playing this hero except for Nine, and it's really, 
proven clutch. He has a Kaya. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, he's going Kaya Sanj, the, the just be all end all item nowadays. This Oh, yeah, and again, back to that, like, mis-execution there on the, the Meteor Hammer with the song. Like, we saw one of those earlier today, but you got to keep in mind as viewers, like, they've been playing Dota now for seven and a half hours on OG. Uh, it, it's it's It takes it out of you when you have to play that first best of three and then go right into the best of five. But at the same time, that's what separates people sometimes and sometimes separates teams in these uh, grand final situations. Got to be able to win. Yeah, and it is a bit of the upper bracket advantage that you, you get to watch your opponent play. Now, he's hunting. He has a Silver Edge, and he actually has 22.8 mana regen because of this Kai pickup, so he can stay in Arctic Burn permanently. He's just going to run around with his 550 MS with the Silver Edge and just hunt anyone. Like, it's so hard to catch him. Like, how do you kill this guy when he's just moving around in the trees like this? Yeah, yeah it's, it's impossible. It, it's feeling very, very rough, but we will see how this one goes. Oh, chase down. Soxa going to fall at tier two tower now, taking some extra damage. Tundra looks so good. And they're already setting up. Like, nine, uh, nine. he's on the case. They take taken top. They had control that area. He's setting up bottom. He has a silver edge up again, and they're smoking to wrap around OG. This is very scary for OG here. No tail. Do they realize it? They spot him. Jump forward. Winner's Curse. It's on to Thompson. Trying to live through this. Do they have enough? Skinner. He centers his real carry. Nine. Brought down low. But the Cold Embrace trying to live through it. Meanwhile, the rest of OG dropping like flies. Oh, they try and bring down Nine. He's still living through this one. Fada got the shield. No tail trying to run. Seb gonna pop that BKB, see if he can take down this pesky Wyvern, but he's just gonna have to TP out in the end. Unbelievable execution. He's not Coming done yet. From he's Tundra. Ooh. Okay, okay. Sumel, blink away. Wait, you can chase him. Oh my god. This is a speedy dragon running across the map. They could not kill him. Holy Locket came out, Abaddon Heels came out, Asunder came out, and he's just, he's, he's just going He's unkillable. Living again. Skinner TV, they pop the Look at the blink forward. Skinner, he finds him too. If you deal with the Wyvern afterwards, you got to deal with the TB as the right clicks come through. Dead. No buyback on these heroes. 34 minutes in. The Tundra lineup hoping to find an opening here and go up in this series on match point. Double kill. No buybacks on anybody. Tundra taking the lead. God, I love Dota. Like anytime something like this. Oh, Skinner, he's he's blinking in. Oh, he's in trouble. Thompson gotta back out. It ain't gonna be there. As it looks like they're gonna take down this tier three towers. The question is, do they try and go for it all? I mean, right now the buyback status, it's there because melee of gold, but they jump in. There's gonna be the winner's curse. The right click's coming through. Thompson will go down. He has buyback though, but they're going for the tier four towers. 40 seconds, no timber saw. The buyback comes from Tops. He's got to hold this all on his own for the moment. No friends nearby at all. Six seconds till Soxa. Fata gets healed back up again. All of the heals in the world. They're trying to finish this one right now. Four seconds still drown. Nine, he won't die. They can't kill the Wyvern. Soxa ends up falling. They tried to blow it all up right there at the last second, but it wasn't enough. Now are they barely backing now? Oh no. Split. They're thinking about staying. I mean, oh, it's so tempting. This is that moment you're looking for it all. You want to go to TI, they find Thompson broken. Jumps away, still trying to live. Can they get him down? Yes, that's a dieback. And with that, Tundra are going to set their sights one last time on the Ancient. Another song. Can he hit the combo? Tread switch, just one time for it. Will they get him? Skinner, he gets the blink away. No, it's not how it's supposed to go. They can't get it, and in the end, Tundra will go up in the series over OG. What a fabulous performance. I'm absolutely fascinated, like fabricasted, that they could win this game. <laughs> I love this about Dota, because every time you think you understand something about this game, the draft, how hero matchups go, these teams, they just break your understanding and you learn. This is one of those games. Tundra, they just, how did they win this draft? How did they win this game? I mean, it's, it's insane. That, 
it, it really is insane. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why we all love Dota. This this is Dota 2. This is what we came here for. Uh, and to, <laughs> to break it all down, um, we're, we're going to head back to the panel one last time. I know we could talk about this match forever, but uh, we got to keep going because they're keeping these lobbies going. We're getting ready for game number four. One match away, Tundra, from knocking out, defending two-time TI champions, OG. See you guys on the other side of the break.